In April, I completed a game jam for the Godot Wild Jam number 68. This had the theme of Forge. It also had some exciting prospects and some great submissions. The wild cards were to add a funny game over sound, to have cool gadgets in your game, and to make the player restart on death. With the theme and the wild cards in mind, I started thinking of some blacksmithing, forging, mining, vampire survivors inspired gameplay. Now I've done a vampire survivors inspired game jam in the past. I'll link to that down in the video description below. But I wanted to try a different take on the genre. Mining, forging, and crafting. Thus, Survive the Mines was born. Survive the Mines takes inspiration from Minecraft, Terraria, Core Keeper, and other crafting and mining focused survival sandbox games, as well as the typical survivor genre where the enemies are constantly pursuing you. In the jam, you start off with a simple set of tools and you must explore to find resources to mine while fending off the enemies that pursue you. You'll have to watch your back while trying to extract those resources, and upon defeating the enemies, you'll also acquire some resources that you may find useful in your crafting. Create a forge to begin refining your resources, an anvil to process and work those materials into new tools, and a grinding wheel to refine those tools and upgrade them with new stats. Be on alert and don't get overwhelmed, otherwise your run may come to an unexpected end. One reason I love game jams is I always feel like I'm adding new tools by learning new skills. If you're looking to forge new tools for your tool belt, then take a look at this video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant offers thousands of hands-on and interactive lessons in math, data, analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant's hands-on approach to learning is a proven way to be more effective than just watching a video. Their focused lessons are built to provide a more effective way to build critical thinking skills and help you become a better problem solver. These methods help build lasting knowledge that you can apply. With lessons built to be bite-sized and only take a few minutes each day, you can create habits that improve your growth over time. Maybe you're looking to wrap your head around some while loops or are trying to combine multiple conditional statements. Brilliance Thinking and Code Path is perfect fit for you. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash gamedevartisan or click on the link in the description. You also get 20% off on an annual premium subscription. Again, that's brilliant.org slash gamedevartisan. Thanks again, Brilliant, for sponsoring today's video. For a nine day game jam, this scope was manageable and works great for a sense of progression and objectives. However, as feature creep always sets in when doing these game jams, I was inspired to create something much larger and that had many features as hopeful candidates that I would like to implement should the time allow during the jam. I would have loved to have progressed towards a larger sense of progression, going deeper into the mines that would have led to a potential boss fight. I also wanted more depth in the crafting and building systems that took advantage of that satisfying collection of the many materials from fighting and mining. I also wanted combat to feel a little bit more exciting and the enemies to have a little more behavior to them than the typical following pattern. I also would have loved to introduce the ability to join your friends in the experience as these types of games are a lot more fun when you're joined with others. With these additional scope creep items off my jam list, I decided it'd be worth adding them to a roadmap scope instead for a larger project altogether. That's when I decided I would attempt to publish this jam as a larger, more feature complete game. This means that my vision for Survive the Mines could extend into the future with the goal of a more polished version which could include drop-in, drop-out multiplayer for a more shared experience with friends. And this would also include a character customization feature, which I've already begun working with as part of my testing for the multiplayer aspect of the game. Also a larger sense of depth and exploration from the map size and the layers. This includes a focus on unique spin of a roguelike genre. I'm still refining the concept behind this feature as it provides an exciting gameplay loop to the core game experience. More on this will be ironed out over time. Also a deeper crafting and building system that leverages the vast and unique items that we've collected and crafted as you progress throughout the game. An improved combat for the enemies and moving away from kind of that 
vampire survivors type combat in favor of a more interactive and interesting type of gameplay. And as always, more to come in the future devlogs as I iron out some of the roadmap and determine a proper set of scope for a more official release. So what's next? The game jam was in April. That means a few weeks have gone by since the end of that jam, and I've continued working on the project ever since. I've already mentioned the fact that I'm doing a multiplayer test and have started building the character customization feature to go along with it. This is still early in development and will need some refinement, but it is well underway at this point. I want to make sure that I tackle the multiplayer early, as it's important that it's ironed out while I build out new features. It's easier if multiplayer isn't an afterthought. I've also been working with Steam to get my developer application paperwork approved so that I can get my Steam page up for the game. In the meantime, I've been working with implementing some of the basic functionality using the wonderful Godot Steam library. This will help me get my feet wet while using Steam with Godot. In addition to the multiplayer, I've been rewriting some of the core systems to make them more maintainable and to work better with the multiplayer as a host. The first thing on this list was the inventory system. At this point, I've done a fair bit of work with inventory systems and UI elements, so this felt like a natural place to focus my experience. While building out more of the involved inventory system, I ran into a strange bug with the drag and drop and alt mouse button presses, more specifically when you call the force drag function on a control node. I ended up submitting a GitHub issue and spent some time digging into the source code trying to resolve the issue. The fix came through pretty quickly and should be resolved within 4.3. This side quest ended up being a fun experience in working with the Godot source code and was something I had hoped to do but had been intimidated by for quite some time now. Getting to better understanding the core of the game engine is a skill that I'd like to have at some point. The current Game Jam version of the game is available over on my itch.io page and is playable within the browser. My goal is to continue to progress the game in a more playable manner while providing updates to a select group of people to aid in testing, especially as the multiplayer becomes more fleshed out. I'll be sharing updates in progress on my Discord and relevant social pages, so if you want to stay up to date, be sure to join us, links are in the description. If you'd like to consider supporting the development of this project, please head over to my Ko-fi page and support me there, or help spread the word by liking and sharing with others. That helps YouTube know that there's an interest in my project. I'll be releasing devlogs as often as makes sense based on the progress of the project and the meaningful updates I have to share with you all. If you'd like more frequent, less visually exciting updates, be sure to join us in the Discord. Thanks again for all of the support on the channel, and I'm excited to have you all alongside me for this new journey. As always, thanks for watching and happy coding.